Good morning. Today we look at uh, the remainder of chapter 14 of Mark, uh, verses 54 through 72, or wherever it ends. Quite a few verses in this chapter. Um, but it's, you know, Peter, um, Jesus has just been arrested, and, and we begin with Peter following at a distance. And, and we know that story. Uh, right into the courtyard of the high priest and he's warming himself by the fire and and um, they were all trying to find testimony against Jesus and it, it says in the Bible that their testimony didn't agree. You know, they couldn't all agree on the same thing. Their eyewitness accounts were, they just weren't all the same. They, they couldn't come up with some concrete evidence against Jesus. And... Um, then the, then the high priests stand up before Jesus. And Jesus has been standing there listening to all of this and not responding. And, and they ask Jesus, aren't you going to say anything? Aren't you going to try to defend yourself? I mean, that's, you know, in the court of law today, um, if you be, decide to be your own lawyer, to be your own counsel, you're, you run a pretty high risk because of all of that. But, you know, here, here's Jesus on trial and not saying anything, not not saying that's not what happened, that's not right. You know, he isn't defending himself. He's not getting into an argument. He's not getting into a debate. He's not answering anything. And the high priests, the high priest stood there and asked, have you no answer? What is this that they're testifying against you? Aren't you gonna say anything? And it says that he stood there silent and said nothing. And again, then the high priest asks him straight out, Are you the Messiah? This is verse 61. Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Six, verse 62, Jesus says, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the cloud of heaven. So they've been asking Jesus, and he's been showing them in so many ways, through the miracles, through his teaching, through his healing, through his compassion, They've been showing, Jesus has been showing them his godliness. He's been indicating to them fulfillment of scripture and, and all of this. And now they ask him, you know, are you the Messiah? He says, I am. This is what they want to hear. You know, they want to know, are you the one? And it was John's question. You know, John the Baptist sent his disciples to ask Jesus, are you the one? Even though John had testified, behold, the son of God, behold, the lamb of God. John recognized him, but still wondered early on in the Gospels. And here at the end of the Gospels, I mean, at the end of each Gospel, we're going to see this, that the high priests ask Jesus, and when he says, I am, then it's boom, he's blasphemy. You know, he can't be. I mean, their, their expectation, their hope is that Jesus will say, no, I'm just, I'm just a guy just trying to make a name for myself. I'm just a guy that's doing good, but I, I'm not from God. I'm just a nobody, you know? And that's not what he says. He says, I am. When they ask, are you the Messiah? He says, I am. And, and he knows the reaction. He knows what's going to happen. That they, you know, they just decide at that point, I mean, we got to get rid of this guy. You know, here, here's the Son of God, the Messiah, the promised Christ. And... They are so blinded by their, by being set in their ways. They're so, they're blinded by the traditions. They're blinded by everything that, that they think should be, that they can't see God in Jesus. They can't see that Jesus is the one to come. And they, you know, so, it's, so the high priest tears his clothes. What do we need other witnesses for? You've heard the blasphemy. What's your decision? And they all say that he is, they condemn him saying that he is deserving of death. However, the Jewish priesthood, the high priest and them, the Jewish people themselves had no right. They had no authority to condemn anyone to death. To, they could condemn them, but they couldn't sense them, sentence them or can carry that sentence out. So that's what they needed the Roman government for. That's why they go from here with Jesus to the palace, to the governor, and we don't get into that today, but um, what we're going to find now is, is that, you know, after Jesus has said, I am the Messiah, 
they condemn him for blasphemy. They spit on him. They mock him. They, they, you know, they strike him, try to get him to prophesy. And it says the guards also took him and beat him. And then we have the story of Peter. Peter who had, as we began this, followed at a distance. Verse 54, Peter had followed at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest. And Peter is there, and it's evidently a cold night. He's warming himself by the fire. And a, a servant girl, it says, comes and says, you were with Jesus, the Nazarene. And it says, he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about. And then he went from there out a little bit further away from, you know, the center of the court. And again, this same servant girl, it says, and the servant girl on seeing him again began to say to the others, this man is one of them, but he denied it. And then the bystander said, you know, he, he certainly, you are one. But, you know, and in, um, in the new revised, in several, the new international version, it doesn't have in, in verse 72, um, well, let's see. In verse 68, after uh, the after he Jesus after Peter has been accused the first time and goes out to the forecourt, it says in in the, like the New Revised Standard in several copies it says the cock crowed, and then the servant girl sees him again, and then the other bystanders accuse him, and all three times we know Jesus I mean, is denied by Peter, and after the third. Time, it says in verse 72, at that moment the cock crowed for the second time. This is the New Revised Standard. As I read this in the New International Version, uh, the cock doesn't crow in verse 68. I mean, it isn't there. And the footnotes say some, some early manuscripts include this. And some, you know, where it says the cock crowed twice, you know, in verse 72, the New International Version does say the cock crowed twice, the second time, but it doesn't list the first time. I mean, it's, and I don't know, I mean, it's just in reading the different versions that you find out different things. I mean, that they don't all have exactly the same wording. And, and so as I read it, you know, in that New International Version earlier this morning, I, I, I read back through it several times to see, well, where did I miss this, the first crowing, you know, you know and, and it wasn't there. And then I, I finally looked in a different New International Version that had some footnotes, and it said, you know, some ancient manuscripts include the cock crowed at that verse, and some will just say, the, at seven, verse 72, that the cock crowed. You know, so some versions say the cock will crow twice, and some just once, and it's just... I guess it's, it's in a way it shows us that you know all of this testimony against Jesus earlier didn't match up. Well, here even in the Gospels, the the early manuscripts, some of the later manuscripts, uh, somebody has added or subtracted or left something out, and you know so they don't all match a hundred percent, and that's okay. It's okay. We um, we know the story, and you know that that detail whether the cock crowed one time early and then a second time later, or whether the cock crowed just one time, doesn't matter. What matters is, is that Peter denied Jesus a third time. Peter remembered Jesus' words that, you will deny me three times before the cock crows at the break of dawn, basically. And Peter remembers, you know, that's what we end with today. It says, Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, uh, before the cock crows twice, you'll deny me three times. And then Peter broke down and wept. And, and I, I hurt with Peter. I hurt for Peter. I hurt for myself. I hurt for all of us because I've talked about it before. We, we've all denied Jesus. We've all done things against Jesus. We've all done things we're ashamed of. And then when we think back about it, you know, later on, we feel like Peter, and we break down and we cry. We feel that remorse. And, and the reality is, is that's the way we should feel every day about the sins that we commit. Because we do, we sin every day. I mean, I, I you know, people ask me, well, you've been behaving? And I say, well, I try to behave, you know, but, 
But it doesn't matter. I mean, we sin every day. It doesn't matter how hard we try. I mean, there's a, a, a random thought might go through our mind or, a, or something we don't do, something we don't say. We don't, I mean, it's just like the sins we have done and left undone, things we have said and left unsaid in the brief order of confession. You know, it's, we sin every day and we come to God with that remorse and we come to God asking for forgiveness, asking for grace. And like Peter, um, you know, we may not break down and cry when we think about our sins. We may, and sometimes we probably do, and that's good. I mean, but when I really seriously think and ponder, you know, meditate on the fact that Jesus was arrested, Jesus was mocked, he was beaten, he was crucified for me and for my sins, you I mean, that... That makes me just like Peter, break down, want to cry, and just, you know, why do you have to do this for me? You know, and you know, when Jesus on the cross says, you know, from Psalm 22, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And if he quotes that whole psalm at the end of the Psalm 22, there's there's praise and glory and honor for God in there. But But we all have those times when we wonder, you know, has God forsaken us? Or maybe, will God forgive, forsake me? Will God give up on me? God never will give up on you. And we find that out later about Peter, and I'll talk about that when we get there. But for today, just try to live a little bit in the moment of remembering maybe when you have betrayed Jesus, when you felt as Peter does at the end of this chapter 14 filled with remorse, filled with grief, filled with the need for forgiveness. And God will, God will forgive. Live in that. God will forgive.